fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's danger on the trail ahead. I'll sell the Jim Blake, a bounty hunter, rode into Mountain City with a chip on his shoulder. He reined up viciously at the hitch rail. Oh, oh there. Steady. Entered the handiest cafe and yelled to the man behind the bar. We're getting so many laws around here, a man don't know where to turn. Set him up, barkeep. Matter with you, Jim. You look mad enough to chew off a couple of horseshoe nails. Hell, I am. Why don't they let the bounty hunters know if they're going to change the laws? I never heard of any changes. Well, there's been some. Here's how. Drink her down. <clears throat> all the years I've hunted wolves and lions and the like for the bounty on them, all I had to do was turn in the ears and get paid off, and now it's changed. How's that? Got to turn in the whole pelt now. <laughs> Fine thing. A man's loaded down in no time if he has to bring in the whole hide to get his bounty. Can't tote enough to make it pay. Well, maybe there's reason for the law. Ah, there can't be a reason. It makes good sense. If you got the ears, it's proof the critter is dead. Maybe so. Well, sure it's proof. What more do they want? Where'd you hear about the new law? Up north of here, Sam Peter's place. He always took the bounty critters off my hands at a discount. That saved me lugging them into town. Now Sam says the ears don't count. You gotta have the whole pelt. I never heard of that ruling, but the chances are you're right. Well, I know what Sam Peters told me. Well, I can see why they'd make a law like that. I'd like to know why. It's the Webster fur outfit. Webster? Sure. Webster fur is getting so powerful, they can just about tell the lawmakers what to do and count on it being done. But what's to be gained? Webster outfit wants furs, that's the main thing. But the hides of wolves and the like are no good. No, but the point is this, Jim. While you're hunting a wolf for bounty, you could just as well hunt down a critter that's got good fur. Webster would like to discourage bounty hunting so as the hunters would spend their time in bringing in valuable fur. For the prices the Webster outfit pays? Oh, no, not me. I'll go hungry first. Here comes Tom Turner. He's one of the head men in the Webster outfit. Maybe he can answer your questions. Howdy, Mr. Turner. Howdy. I thought I heard complaints from this end of the bar. Yeah, if you mean me, you sure did. So you went to the Webster outfit, huh? That's right. Just about run this town, don't you? I? <laughs> no, I don't run the town. We got Marshal John Maitland for that. Why? I'd like to know about this new rule for the bounty hunters. Got to turn in all of the hide instead of the ears. I suppose you come with me and I'll try to explain it. Uh, what did you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's Jim Blake. And I've been making my living by hunting for bounty. I see. 
You could make a better living hunting worthwhile animals, couldn't you? Uh, step over this way where we can talk. Yeah, I could make a better living in the Webster outfit and pay the right prices for furs. Mm, not satisfied, huh? No. Yeah, sit down, Blake. We won't be bothered here in this corner. <clears throat> Say, the last time I heard about the Webster fur outfit, there was a gent named Sedley in charge. Uh, Sedley went crooked. I wonder where he got that idea. Blake, is there a point to that remark? Oh, maybe there is, if you look for it. I've heard plenty about this Webster outfit. <laughs> Chances are that the things you heard came from the Great Western Warehouse. They've been trying to compete with the Webster organization and can't do it. So the Great Western men are spreading all manner of stories about it. No, Great Western isn't the outfit that's put through this new rule about bounty hunting. Yeah, maybe not. What's more, I understand Great Western aims to pay a fair price for furs from now on. Well, what's there to that? They can't pay more than we do and stay in business. Now, why don't you hunt and just sell to us and stay in line like everybody else does? I'll be hanged if I will. Blake, every so often some gent like you gets the idea that he's bigger than an organization. And then he finds out that he's not. <laughs> now, you'll only waste your time trying to be independent. When I can't be independent, I'll clear out of here. I see. And I aim to know more about this new law regarding bounty hunting. Weren't you told it was a law? Yes, but I want to... Does that satisfy you? No. I'm going to see John Maitland and find out about it. You suit yourself. I always suit myself, Turner. Good evening. Independent, huh? You signal for me, Turner? You saw the man that I was talking to? Yeah. If I get this butch and get it straight, he's going to find out about the new rules on bounty hunting. He is, huh? I've issued that rule for all the men that are scattered on the plains paying off the bounty hunters. Sure. There's no real law that says a whole animal has to be turned in to get paid off. But most bounty hunters accept what's told them and let it go at that. Jim Blake isn't taking it that way. Troublemaker, huh? He's going to question John Maitland. So you'd better do something about it. No. Right now. Now get going. Catch him before he gets to Maitland's house. You know where to take him. The following day, Tonto was in town. He stood watching a man tack a sign on the big sidewall of the Webster warehouse. Uh, what that sign say? Hey. As you read it? Oh, you redskin, huh? Ah, uh, me, Indian. Well, this is a notice to everyone that's got furs to sell. Oh. I reckon some of your friends will be glad to hear about this. Um, what it say? Well, Webster's going to pay a lot more for furs than they paid in the past. Oh. Uh. Why him do that? Oh, I guess the Great Western Outfit has been paying a little more than we have. So, uh, we're going to way ahead of them. Hey there, you. Well, howdy, Mark Collins. Don't you howdy me. Tell me where you get the prices you're paying for furs on the new schedule. You'll have to ask Mr. Webster about that. Webster? You know doggone well he never shows up around here. As far as I know, he's just a name. Then call on Tom Turner. He's a boss now. You you mean to say what I heard about your new prices is the truth? There's a schedule. Just tacked it up. Why, well, it can't be right. Why, well, Thunderation, nobody can pay those prices and stay in business. You started raising prices yourself, Ma. I paid fair prices from the start. Great Western has always paid fair prices, and it always will as long as I run the outfit. When I'm gone and my daughter takes over, she'll pay fair prices, same as I do. But those prices are yours. Don't talk to me about them. Talk to Tom Turner. He's the boss. Well, by Juniper, I will. I'll do it right away. I know what the market price is, Turner. And I know you can't pay prices like those new ones and stay in business. Nope, I reckon we can't for very long, Ma Collins. But we can pay them long enough. Yeah. Just long enough to break me. Is that it? That's about it. Why, you money-grabbing coyote. You wait. Wait till I tell Madge about this. Well, there must be something we can do, Madge. I don't know what it would be, Mom. Webster can pay whatever they want to get the furs from the trappers. But there's new high prices. We can't pay them. Of course we can't. We'd lose money on every hide we bought. And if we don't pay, we won't get any furs. So that's that. We're licked. Yep. Webster fur can afford to lose cash for a time, and they'll break us by doing it. 
After we're out of here, they can cut their price down to nothing, and the trappers and hunters will have to take it. There won't be anyone else to sell to. I suppose there'd be no use going to John Maitland. I don't see what good that'd do. Oh, if only Webster himself would come out here, that dirty scheming snake. If I could only see Webster himself. Hey, Mark Hollins. Well? I can't let you have no more furs. I got to sell to the Webster outfit now. Well, go on, sell to him then. Well, I'm sorry, Mark. Forget all about the fact that Great Western paid you higher prices up till now. Go on, sell to Webster. No, you can't blame Hank for that. I'm sorry, Mark Hollins, but we got to get the best price we can. If uh, you want to meet the Webster's price. No, I don't. I always paid a fair price, and I always will. But I won't lose all I got trying to compete with Webster. Well, it's too bad, then. I reckon you won't get many more furs this season. After dark, Tonto rode into a small, well-concealed camp in the woods where he reported to the Lone Ranger. It's mighty unfair, the Webster outfit, Tonto. Mark Collins and her daughter have had their little trading post here for a long time. Oh, uh, that's right. Webster has warehouses all over the fur country. This is only one of his offices. Everyone sells furs to Webster now. Yes, he's out to stop all competition. Then he'll have things his own way. But, Tonto, uh -huh. what about Jim Blake? Did you find him? I'd like to know more about the new rule for bounty hunters. No, me not find him. Did you ask about him? Uh-huh, me ask two, three fella. Him go to cafe last night. Oh, then what? Then him get plenty mad. Him mad at Webster Fur. But hasn't anyone seen him since? No, no one see him. Did he leave the cafe? Uh-huh, him leave. Him say him go see Marshall, but Marshall not see him. I wonder if Jim's disappearance has anything to do with the sudden raise and the Webster price of furs. Uh, me not know I... Wait, Kimasabi. What is it, Tonto? You hear wagon close by. Yes, I heard too. Eddie Silver, old boy. You'd try to take a wagon through this woods from the regular trail to town is so much easier. Keep down, we'll see what we can find out. A buckboard loaded down with the hides of animals moved slowly through the dark woods. At the edge of the woods near town, the driver reined up and a man oh, stepped boy. forward oh, from the shadows. Right on time. Anyone see you coming through the woods? No, but it was hard going. You're here, that's what counts. You can drive straight ahead to the back of the warehouse. The boys will have the door open so you can drive right in. Good. Climb aboard. <coughs> I made sure there was no one between here and the warehouse to spot you. Get up there. Butch, is a man named Jim Blake, a bounty hunter, come into town? Yeah. That critter's gonna make trouble or my name's not Sam Peters. He wouldn't bring me the hold of the pelt to collect the bounty. I met up with Blake. He said he'd be hanged if he'd turn in more in the ears. It's all right. There's plenty of bounty hunters that did turn in more in the ears. They got a good load here. Sure, but what about Blake? If he starts investigating... He won't. They've got him where he'll be out of the way. The door is open. You can drive right in. Good. Get up there. Anyone around, boys? Right here. We'll close the doors behind you. Oh, there. Oh, steady. Oh, oh there. Bring out those coat, boys. Light a lantern in here. Oh. Yes, this is sure a sizable warehouse. Even bigger when we take over the business of the Great Western. Hurry <coughs> up now, boys. Right. Right. Load those wolf skins and load the wagon up with a higher price first. Right. And I'll toss them down to you. What's this? Grab them. No, you don't. I'll fix you. Not so fast. Hit him. Let me at him. I didn't know there was someone hit under the pelts. Swim this way. Wolf pelts, huh? We'll uh, see. Hit him. Uh, I got him. Good work, Butch. I'll get the ropes on that critter and then we'll find out more about him. Uh, don't hit him again, Butch. He's out cold. Why not finish him off? I don't need to. We'll treat him the same as we did Jim Blake and let him go together. <laughs> It'll work out just right. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. When the Lone Ranger was in camp, he heard a wagon. Wondering why it was being driven through the woods instead of over the much easier trail on the plains, he crept through the darkness to investigate. 
Finding the wagon piled high with furs, he climbed aboard and concealed himself. Sam Peters drove the load of furs through a rear door of the Webster warehouse. There, the masked man was discovered and overpowered by the odds against him. Take him away in the corner near Jim Blake. Rope him tight and lead him there. I've got his gun. Yeah, grab a hold. I got him. <coughs> Heavy critter. Heavy he looks. We'll have to work fast, boys. There's several other loads coming in between now and the time we start the fire. Just leave him there and hurry back. We will. I don't know when he got aboard my wagon. Uh, probably in the woods. Yeah, this will be all right. Been down here alongside of Jim Blake. Uh, is Blake conscious? Sure, but he's gagged. I put a gag on this one, too, just to be sure he don't holler for help. You need any help? No, I can handle him alone. I wonder who he is. I don't know. We haven't got time to find out. Yeah, that'll do for a gag. Come on, Sam. We'll help the others unload your wagon and load it again. Right. The Lone Ranger recovered consciousness, only to find himself bound and gagged. But he knew that Tonto was still free and waited patiently in the darkness. The hours passed while Tom Turner, Butch, and other men unloaded and loaded many wagons, which came into the warehouse with cheap or worthless skins and left with ones that were valuable. Finally, an hour before daybreak. There. I just managed to get the gag out of my mouth. One minute, and I'll see if I can get my teeth in the knot that holds yours in place. <laughs> Hold still now. This is the last loop, then, Tom. Yep. As soon as we get this rig loaded, we're through. Open the front door so there'll be a good draft in here. Uh, what about those fellows over there? You think we ought to... No, visit? won't be time for it. They're tied so they can't get out. There. Now can you talk? Try to... Don't make too much noise. I can talk. I had the gag loose when they first came in, but they spotted me and put it on tight again. You're Jim Blake. Right. I don't think I'll be able to do much with the ropes. It holds our hands. I can't get at them. I don't know who you are. A friend of yours. Well, you must be or you wouldn't be here like this. Do you know what Turner and Butcher are doing? Yes, they're bringing in wolf and mountain lion skins. Yeah, and taking out the good pelts that would bring a nice price to the men that got them. Why are they doing that? They're going to set fire to this place. They are? They're going to burn us with the rest of it. The crooks have the sleekest scheme I ever heard. Yeah, they've raised the price on furs. Sure, and they got a lot of them here because of it. All day yesterday, they were buying them faster than they could pile them up in here. Only they didn't pay for them yet. When do they pay for the furs? Well, according to the agreement... They store the furs here at the risk of the ones that sells them. And then when the furs are shipped east, they're paid for at the price agreed on. If something happens to them while they're here, the Webster Company doesn't lose a cent. No. So that's the scheme. When the fire is burned out, there will be evidence that fur has been destroyed. But no one can tell what kind of fur. The owners will find the ruins of wolf skins and think their valuable furs were destroyed. Sure, that's the scheme. That's why these critters have been demanding all of the hide from bounty hunters. That's why they're getting all those no-good pills. Webster must have all the men who deal with bounty hunters under his thumb. Well, Webster's got doggone near everyone under his thumb. He'll bust a great Western company before he's done. How are they going to explain the fire? That's why I'm here. Everyone heard me say something about the Webster outfit when I was in the cafe. They've seen to it that, well, that there's been a lot of talk about me plotting against the Webster company. I'll be blamed for starting the fire. Now that I'm here? Oh, they'll just say I had a helper. They'll spread the story that we got trapped in our own fire. No, they're slick ones, all right. The scheme they got worked out is foolproof. Oh, but for one thing... What's that? We won't burn. Oh, what's to help us? I can't budge my hands, can you? No, but I've got a friend on the outside. Yeah? Then there's a chance for us to get out of here? Yes, we can count on Tonto. I... Hey, I smell smoke. Yes, they started the fire. I never noticed them leaving. Look, there's the flames over there. Look to your left. More flames. But the pole cats even left the doors open so the fire would burn good. But they started fires in two places. Three at least. Look toward the front. By the... <coughs> Keep your face close to the floor. The smoke isn't as bad there. You don't have much time. This wood building will go like tinder. Look at those flames leaping up. Keep close to the floor. <coughs> The main street of Mountain City was deserted in the gray light of dawn. The clouds of smoke from the warehouse mingled with the morning mist. But suddenly a vivid orange tongue devoured the dusk. Almost at once the town sprang to life. The first shout of fire had hardly died away when the street became crowded with townspeople and the trappers whose furs were inside the warehouse. The flames and with them the clamor of the frantic men rose to the skies. Ma Collins and her daughter Madge roused from their beds dressed in haste and ran from their home toward the scene of the excitement. Mom, look! The Webster Warehouse is on fire. Sheep's alive. Come on, Madge. Come on, we'll see it. My friends are in there. I lose my friends. Blue that fire. Those flames are busting through the roof. 
That's a good thing. Remember what he said? Don't change the fight. Never mind the bucket brigade. We can't save that building. Who started that? Who started it? How'd that fire start? Hey, Turner, what about my furs? What about the warehouse? What do Webster say about that? Oh, we can't save it. The furs will all be lost. I've got $500 worth of furs in there. It serves you right, Hank. You wanted to do business with the Webster Company. You, Mark Collins. I'm going to make you prove you didn't do this because we were busting your business. I don't need to fight that way, Tom Turner, and you know it. Look at it all. Flames as high as the sky. The flames increased in fury, and the scorching heat drove the crowd back some distance. Tom Turner made believe he was very much concerned about the loss of the warehouse, but inwardly he gloated at the thought of the fortune and furs which the Webster Company could have for nothing. He whispered to Butch. <laughs> We can build a new warehouse for a tenth of what the furs will bring. Webster sure will give us a nice cut on this job. Then suddenly two horses broke through the crowd, an Indian on one of them. Hey, Scout! Hey, Scout! Ma, look at that Indian. Hey, that redskin. Get those horses back. All right. Then stay here. Don't let that Indian go in there. You can't save them. Let uh, me go. No, you don't. We won't let you burn to death in that fire. All the men have lost furs, Indian. You're no worse off than the rest. Let me go. Not on your life. It's your death to go in there. That's right. Hang on to me, Butch. Hold the Indian back. You heard what she said. You let me go. There. Now, that won't get you nowhere, Indian. You let me go, too. Now, see here, you tell no. Now, me go fast. No, stop him. Wait, Turner. Shooting him won't help. Here, give me a hand with these horses. He's gone right into the warehouse. He hasn't got a chance. Uh, we're supposed to put Joe because I uh, tried to stop him. Those horses want to go after him. It's the first time I saw horses so eager to run into a burning building. If he does come out, I'll square with him for knocking me down. Yeah, me too. Poor Redskin, he likely went local when he saw that his furs was going up in smoke. And who wouldn't? Six months of my hunting is in those flames. Look, the roof is about to cave. Oh, merciful goodness. Isn't there some way to get that engine out of there? There goes the roof. <laughs> the warehouse caved in, a twisted column of spark shot upward. The fire seemed to gather itself for one last surge of energy, a final blaze of glory to herald its own death. The flames died out. The smoke still billowed from the blackened timbers. The sun rose, blood red, but not a face was turned to the east or lifted to the sky. The crowd, now almost silent, watched the ruins. Well, that's that. Now I guess it'll burn out slow. Roof and walls are flat. Oh, that poor red skin. Oh, Ma, when I think of that poor Indian. Well, I reckon we may as well go home. Nothing more to stick around here for. Yeah, there's more men coming. You're too late to see the excitement, though. Ma, look. That looks like the same Indian. Madge, it can't be. And the other one. He's mad. What? What? Look. It's a red skin. And the masked man. It can't be, Tom. It can't be. Stay where you are, Turner. <laughs> Steady, Silver. All right, boy. What is the Indian? But that mask man. Look how that white horse is acting. And there's Jim Blake. Good boy, Silver. Here's what I want. He's got his rope. I want you, Turner. Wait, Blake. Let me have this rope. Help me, Butch. Oh, he's rope me, too. Get that redskin. He's the one who started the fire. It's too thin for anyone to believe, Butch. Which one of those two have my guns? Now, wait. Hey, have... Turner. Good. Uh, here they are. Now, where's the marshal? Oh, there he is, mister. I Look saw up. the whole thing. How'd that redskin get out of that fire? He went out the back way. But before he left, he cut the ropes that held Jim Blake and me. We were supposed to burn in there the same as a wolf hide's dead. Wolf hide? Marshal, you can't listen to a masked man. Make him let me out of this rope. You get out in just a minute. Marshal, all of you men who had hides stored in there, yeah. listen to me. Go ahead. Turner started the fire, but the good skins were taken out during the night. They were replaced by worthless hides. That's why the Webster Company could offer such high prices. They had no intention of ever paying for the skins. They were going to make everyone think they were destroyed. Well, they're not. Where are they? In the woods. Sam Peters is there, tied by Tonto. You'll all find your furs in the woods. Turner and Butch plan to take them away secretly. Now they got to pay for them. And at the price they agreed to pay. And there's one thing more in the agreement. You've got to store those skins until the train takes them east. Now, wait, let me talk. You'll have your chance when you come to trial for burning the warehouse. What was you saying about storing the hides? The agreement states that the men will not be paid for the fur until it's shipped. It also says that the Webster Company will store the furs free of charge until it is. That means, Turner, you've got to have a warehouse. 
It means you will have to use the only warehouse that's available. You, you mean my warehouse? Yes, Mrs. Collins. Ma, that's right. I know he's right. You're doggone right he's right. By Ginger Turner, you've got to put our furs into the Great Western Warehouse. And being Marshal, I might add that Ma Collins can charge any price you doggone pleases for the stone of those things. No, no, she'll break us. You're broken already, Turner. So's your partner, Butch. But we, I tell you... Jail for both of you. Webster himself don't press the charge of arson again you. Then it's because Webster's in his deal with you. Then we'll file charges of attempted murder against all of you. As for that Lone Ranger, oh, he knew what he... Did you say the Lone Ranger? Well, sure. John Maitland's right. It was a Lone Ranger that was here. Where is he now? Hey, he's going away. He and that Indian, they're moving off. Hey, Lone Ranger, wait a minute. Adios. Get him up, Scott. Get him up. I'll sell just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.